Here we are in Taos Pueblo, my home. This village is over a thousand years old. Here within our beliefs, we feel that this is the beginning of time. And right here I am in front of my family's home. And everything here is actually all built out of adobe, water, and straw. What we do is we pour the mixture into a long rectangular mold with about 10 different sections. Each section is about six inches deep. And we let the mixture set for a few days or so. And once it is dry, we have what we call adobes, which are the bricks that the homes are made out of. And what we do is we put a foundation of adobe brick on the bottom layer and we plaster with a certain amount of mud on top and make it a nice flat surface for the floor of the home. And then we just build on the inside, from the inside out. Generally, the walls themselves will only be one adobe brick thick. And just depending on how each family maintains their home, each home contains over a hundred layers of adobe plaster itself because we do repair our homes very regularly. So in general here we try to keep the lifestyle very simplistic. We live completely for the land and maintaining its beauty and the sacredness to us. A majority of our maintenance process here and the building itself is pretty much well known throughout the tribe. Generally we try to encourage our youth before they reach the age of 16 that they do know how to make adobe brick because that within itself is a very important legacy of our people here maintaining the culture at the same time and the beauty of home. So generally, adobe brick and the process of making the home and the process of plastering is pretty much known by all youth by the time they are reaching the age 16. Permaculture is the way that we become indigenous to a place. The way that we really attune ourselves to what grows there, what lives there, how all the systems of nature work there. And part of that has to become how we inhabit that place, you know, what shelters we build for ourselves, how we actually live on that land. And that's what I love about natural building. All of our ancestors knew how to do this, and all of them built with mud and with indigenous materials, and all of them knew how to create beautiful things, or at least somewhere in everyone's ancestry, somebody knew. <laughs> and to just call those ancestors in and ask them to help guide our hands. Fantasy with building and architecture started at a very young age for me, you know, building stump forts and tree houses. I was forever in my youth involved with scrounging materials and building. And tree houses pretty much were my main theme in my youth. In high school, I really got into an architectural program. I spent a great deal of my high school time drawing really wild and creative, curvy buildings. I found a really creative builder that really I was really impressed with his work. I did him looking at him and I showed him some drawings that I've been doing. And he says, you know, you better go buy a hammer because nobody's going to build this stuff for you. So I took his advice, I bought a hammer, quit college and I started to build. I built my first house.
say it looks like I'm calling. This is what I've been looking for all my life. Low cost, inexpensive, sculptable material that you can build with. And cobbles, everything in that regard. And the beauty and the shape and the forms that we can do with cob, you can't do with any other media. It was a great process of determining what I would be doing in the space, what my needs were, what the needs were if other people were here. So I designed the house with things in mind, like I have a window that's on the south side that has shelving in it for sprouting wheatgrass. And there's a little warm nook that's a good spot for sourdough cultures and yogurt cultures. It's those kind of qualities that really excite me about living in a cob house. It's like a little ship, it's like a little dance that you do in the space and the more in tune you are with it, the more efficient it gets. Actually this house was, a, was really a fun experiment in, in planning in all the little uh, exciting things that I could, um, like the compost chute going through the wall, um, the PVC pipe goes through and then uh, it connects to a hood that affixes to the tube and then to a bucket, so it's a closed system. Uh, the, the little altar nook over there, it has a mirror in the back of the niche, and it, the mirror is actually angled forward so that then when you have a light, um, a lamp in that nook, it casts the light down onto the table that's sitting in front. So those little things are really exciting. All these things are ancient materials, they're somewhat ancient techniques, but the buildings that are resulting now are thoroughly modern. They're modern structures because we're using ancient materials but we're applying them in a modern context and a modern design. And so we're coming up with buildings that are way, way more efficient it's not about going back into the Dark Ages. It's about taking these materials and moving very much into the future. What I think this whole natural building movement is about is building small, building economically, so that then you have the time, you don't have a 30-year mortgage that way. Yes, it took time to build it, but ultimately not having that debt is going to give you more free time to do what you want and I would much rather be at home puttering around fixing my stair or like the little board that springs loose than uh, in some you know, veal fattening pen at a computer uh, for somebody, working for somebody else. Uh, um, why? why? What's the point? Um, it's a really great trade-off. I love that. I love that idea.